welcome. Uh, the weather's changed a little bit. We're kind of dressed for it. Yes. We're hitting like 30 these nights. It's chilly. And my friend Robin has come back. If you remember Robin from the Chardonnay tasting, well, we're going up a couple levels. We're going to be doing white burgundies. So hang on to your hat. And we've got a new technology set up here. So bear with us. When we got rid of the whiteboard. We're going to try to do it online with Excel. So it'll be a riot, but hang in there with us. We have the same old character doggies, though. Oh, yeah. Well, we got rid of the cats, though, only for a few minutes because they were getting kind of wild and crazy. Um, Okay, again, this is sensing number 10, and that's quite a lot. And um, you may want to read up on white burgundies. This is the Chardonnay grape we're talking about. Or you may want to purchase and stop this video if you want to taste along with us. Uh, but anyway, we're getting one from each of, I'll call them the subregions or districts of the Burgundy region. Chablis, Maconnet, and Cote de Bone. And the one with Cote de Bone that we're focusing on is a Mont Rocher. Uh, some of the examples, the ones we have here today, that I'm pretty excited about. The first one is a Chablis from Druin, Montemilleur, Premier Cru Chablis, 2013. And it runs about 50 bucks. Um, we were in France last May, a year ago before the pandemic and bought two bottles and it was shipped over by Druin. Uh, the drapes, mm, we got wow. the same wines and Terrific. had them shipped back and split them. So we got uh, a couple whites, a couple reds. But I had forgotten when I opened this that this was one of those and I had no idea that it, that it cost that much until I did the homework. Uh, the second area, we've got a Mekone, uh, Louis Latour, another one of the major negotiations. So Vira Classe, 2010, $15, and a Cote de Bone, the Louis Latour Cassandra Montrachet, Morgio Premier Cru, 70 bucks. So um, the point is, when you're getting into white burgundies, they get a little more expensive. So at any rate, just a reminder that the way we're doing these is sticking with one grape at a time, so you really learn it. And we're using the UC Davis 20-point system. We're doing it kind of at a higher level. This time, we're going to try to crisp up our terminology. I've gone back and looked at some of the International Sommelier Gold, Guild material, and they seem to be really focusing on very specific uh, terminology hmm. for some of the attributes that hmm. we rate. So I've got it on the spreadsheet now. That was from me redoing the intermediate course. But just with respect overall to the burgundies, the white burgundies, uh, some material I picked up, so they really classify them in one of four ways. One is the bottom of the line, which is the Bourgogne Blanc. Mm -hmm. You'll see on a bottle, it'll just say Burgundy or Bourgogne Blanc, and nothing more specific. And um, there may be mineral apple tones to them, unoaked. That's one of the characteristics of the French white wines are pretty much on oak, but not all. Chablis has been one of my favorites for a long time, but I really like it when it's super minerally. Is she going to keep growling? I don't know. <laughs> he wants to try the wine. Come on, Charlie. <laughs> Actually, I think he's, he's, he's going for the cheese. Okay, well, I can... I can. But he, you should have heard him in, in uh, Hilton Head a couple of weeks ago when we were having shrimp. Oh, right. He was very vocal. This is a French dog. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's Oliver, everybody. And this one here is Heidi. And she looks like she's just ready to curl up. But the Chablis, I really like it when it's very mineral. And in 2007, we were there. We spent a lot of time driving back and forth through Chablis and, and went to a, a really nice concert and tasted there. And I think a whole lot of the Chablis region. Macone is further south. And they're usually unoaked. I think of them more as oaked. So that's mm. that's just me. Uh, fruit forward with melon. And this is the area where you see so many uh, Mecca Village on the shelf. Oh, yeah, sure. Just, yeah, yeah, all you know those all from that region, mm -hmm. south of the Cote d'Or, and the Cote de Bone. Oh, this is the Creme de la Creme of white Burgundies. And I think of three. I think of Pouilly Malmarche, Cassandra Malmarche, and Merceau when you're talking about these creme de la creme, these really, really big ones. Hmm. So it's odd to me that our Chablis, you know, is, is uh, 
almost as expensive. And the Cote de Pone, I didn't spend as much as, as it said on the last sheet. I must have had it for a while. But I usually get one bottle of the creme de la creme um, every Christmas. Okay. I'm going to zoom in on this for a minute. Uh, number one, well, if I go up to this area here, Chablis is really physically disjointed from the Burgundy region. Uh -huh. It's like 70 miles away and it's okay. more north and more west. Uh, and, it, and you really think of it as a white wine region. I don't know that I've ever had a red of anything from Chablis. Uh -huh. Burgundy, the, the real Grand Cru's, the reds are in the Cote de Nuit. And that's where you've got like the Gervais Chambertin, uh, which is Chambertin wine. I'm a big fan of the little village of Rishavertan. And that's where I have rented a bike and bike riding all over this. But this region breaks in two right about the city of Bone. And the bottom part is called the Cote de Bone. The top is the Cote de Nuit. This whole thing is known as the Cote d'Or, as all the right. golden slopes. Beautiful. Yeah, and this is like 17 miles. Ah. That's it. You could bike that. Well, you can. And maybe you have. Maybe I have, but I have. And I, I remember pedaling by the field called Chambertan. It's about the size of two football fields and that's it. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's huh. the only place in the world that you can get Chambertan wine. Uh, but there is another wine, Gervais Chambertan, that is not straight Chambertan. It's interesting that there's so many uh, micro regions within that. Absolutely. I used to love Maurice Saint-Denis. That's right there, very close by. Uh, but Bone is really neat. It's a walled-in city, and a lot of the major big wine negociants are located in Bone. I have there are four major negociants. There's Druin, Latour, Chanson, and Jadot. I have been to three of the four mm -hmm. uh, over there. I've never been to Latour, and I'd like to do that. That'd be my next one. But the last year I got to Chanson, thanks to Richard in Northampton. Yes. Um, then down here, way down here, is where you see the Regent's Macon. Okay. And this one we're having today is from here. Viret Classé, that was recently, recently defined as a separate region. But that's where you see your Macon village, your Puy Fousse, all are from, sure. from down here. All righty. Um, that I hope helps. And the other way at the bottom here that recently was tossed out of the region for good reason, it's just a totally different wine. It's made with Gamay. The key with Burgundy is all the reds are Pinot Noir, all the whites are Chardonnay, uh -huh. 100%. This is Gamay and it's made very different style. So it really, you know, nothing bad about it. It's just, it should be standalone, unique on its own and not confused with Burgundy. I think so, I think they did the right it's thing. It's interesting that that one grape and so many different styles. And it's 100% Chardonnay. No blends. No blends. Uh-uh. It's one of the interesting things, difference between like Bordeaux and Burgundy. OK, this uh, is what the countryside of Chablis. So pretty. We drove through that so many times because the house we were staying in in 2007 was two hours from Paris. And I kept having to go up to Paris to get people at the airport. Mm. But all the hillsides now, are covered with the metal windmills. Oh yeah, energy. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite a for quite irrigation a big deal. or creating... uh, power. Right. Yeah, for irrigation, I don't know. Yeah. Good question. So a little bit more about Chablis. Um, it's more of a continental climate. And by that, they're saying it's got cold winters, it's got hot summers, short spring and fall. Mm -hmm. It's got to put up with that, and they've got to have grapes that won't freeze. Mm. before they harvest. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and, and it, it does uh, create more of a, and the Comergerian soil, limestone, comes from a seabed. That's the same soil that is the cause for great champagnes. Oh. Because it's, the champagne region is not all that far. Right. Aroma, citrus, white flower, long tingy finish with high acid. I love it when it gets mineral. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite things. Uh, food pairing, raw bar, scallops, serving temperature, 42 to 50 degrees. Wow. Now this says two to six years, depending on classification. This one is a premier crew. 
And the specific tasting note below says three to eight years, because it's saying, hey, you've got a, a premier crew here. Uh, the vintage is 94E on a scale of 100. The 2015 white burgundies were classified as 94 out of 100. The E means um, accessible, ready to drink. <laughs> so it's a really, you know, it's a good drink time for it right now. And then we go on and do, oh. uh, this is Macone. So you're getting down south and it's more hilly. Uh -huh. uh, the key thing about Burgundy is the monks really help classify the wines in this region. And they really classify them by very specific geography. Those that are on the top of the hill were classified as good for the Pope. Oh, okay. And then halfway down, good for the Kings and the Dukes. And then the bottom tier was good for the monks. Uh -huh. But it's very, very true. When you drive up through that 17 miles where River Shimmerton is, it tilts up like that. Yes. And the best wines are from that region. The other thing that was interesting to me from the sidewalk, the soil is so much below the road because over years, it's like, oh, they built up the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, or, the, or the ground has eroded mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the old vines. Also, the ownership is a key issue of Burgundy. Uh, because of the Napoleonic Code, you couldn't leave all your land to your firstborn. Mm -hmm. You had to leave your land to every one of your siblings. So in a, in a famous place like Clos de Vaugeau, 80 owners own Clos de Vaugeau. Oh. And you may just own a row yes. of lines. So huh. that's why the negotiants became a critical component. They're the ones that would buy the grapes, make the wine. Yeah. You could stay a grape farmer. And the, I really believe that the people that make grapes in Burgundy are grape farmers. In Bordeaux, there's an aristocracy. Mm -hmm. in, in Burgundy, these are guys with overalls and rubber boots and driving tractors. So do they bring all their grapes to like a co-op, a central co-op? Something like that. Okay. Something like that. But, um, some of the major negotiants like Jadot have backward integrated. They've gone all the way back to the grape for some, oh, yeah. of, the, some of the wineries, for some of their vineyards. Because I think Jadot makes 400 different burgundies. Oh. I've got a sheet downstairs from a, a Jadot tasting or maybe when it was there. Um, but that, that just creates a nature of this town. I mean, the town, the whole region. A Mecane, warmer climate, uh, wonderful structure, fresh aroma, epic vintage 2010 hmm. is what they're saying. And that's what we've got. Um, this one had a malolactic fermentation. That's something that makes your favorite Chardonnays why you love California mm -hmm. Chardonnays. It converts malic malolactic acid to lactic acid. Okay. It softens, it makes it creamy, buttery. I gotcha. Big, you know, soft. Yes. Uh, they do that. This one in particular has gone through malolactic fermentation. Uh, and the tasting notes said it presents light muscat aromas, yellow fruit, fresh on the palate, and you gotta have with goat cheese, but also charcuterie fish, minerality on the finish. Those are specific tasting notes. I think Latour had. I'm impressed that, that we're going to be drinking a white wine that's 10 years old. No. Which which one is it? This, this one? The, the, this one? the one in the middle. I think I got that at Richard's not that long ago, to be totally honest. Northampton. Now, this is this is really cool area, the Mont Rocher area. I picnicked here many <laughs> years ago before the 2007 trip with my friends from Virginia. And we just put the car up and said, nobody cares, nobody's around. Yes. Okay, we're gonna picnic here. Because Mont Rocher is just, you know, the creme de la creme. And we were really into Pouligny Mont Rocher in those days. Now it's switched, I, I like Cassandra, Cassandra very much. Most powerful white burgundies. Uh, the most expensive vineyards in the world. Wow. Are these white burgundies. Huh. Mont Rocher means Bald Mountain, right. Mont Rocher. Uh, aroma, soft white flowers, fresh apple. We're hearing that on all these. Mm -hmm. A wine spectator, rate, spectator rated this specific wine 93 out of 100, which is pretty good for wine spectator. Yes. Eight to 10 months in oak barrels. Ah. A nose of Mirabelle, honey and almond, paired with shellfish, fish, foie gras, goat cheese, age five to seven years. I think someplace else I read it a whole lot longer. Oh, one tasting I was reading about, he said they don't really, really get good until 10 years. So you're getting the really good Mont Rocher's. You gotta 
I'm surprised to... they're, that they're aged eight to 10 months in oak barrels. I would have thought just stainless steel for all these whites then. No, the French do, but I, but I don't think, I won't, I don't identify it mm -hmm. closely with California's. Okay, and then that means I'm gonna stop sharing this and I'm gonna go uh, start sharing this, which is our tasting chart. So we're getting into it. I just wanted to introduce introduction to all of them at one time. That it makes it easier for us to move along. Mm -hmm. But our number one here is the Chablis. And I will right. show everybody the bottle. Uh, this is the one that we bought from the Druin Winery in Bone. Uh, hard to see that, but next time I, we only got a little picture of it now of me. But at any mm -hmm. rate, um, it's got a nice, uh, very, it really looks like a city of bone on it. I had trouble finding that place last year for my tasting and I signed up for. Okay, so first thing we're talking about now, they're saying clarity. We want to get crisp, crisp on the terminology. It is too crisp. It's a new verb. Oh. Uh, opaque or transparent. Okay. On clarity. It is definitely transparent. I can see you through my wine. Then. That's transparent. I think I'm going to say that on all of them. Yes. Um, and all oh, the other thing, it, it's not cloudy. No. There are no defects in it from what we can see. Then the core and the rim, they really want you to tell you the color in the core and then what do you see on the rim. Okay. Now, the rim may be more watery, but the core, you may want to compare it with the other three. We have mm -hmm. a really great light in here. I turn that light up one more notch. Over handle. Whoops. A little bit more. Well, that is interesting because it seems to me that the rim is clear. So it's clear on the edge. Or it's the lightest of the three. It is. I would. Okay, and this is the 2000. I lost the year when I was putting this. 2015. 2015. Those were, sure. generally speaking, a very good a year in France. Anything that ends in a five has somehow huh. been a good year, particularly um, Bordeaux's. Okay, so we've got light straw for a color. Or... Yes. Now, people have been following this. You don't have to wait for me to type this in and in the future, because we're just going to go directly to Intensity, it. Intensity, low to high, useful. Mm. Is intensity, is it low or high of the, of the aroma? I think it's, mm. what do you think? Medium? Yeah, medium. I mean, Medium's loud. You, it's, it's got a lovely aroma, but it doesn't knock you out. You have to search for it a little bit. And the, the next thing in crisping up terminology they said between the aroma and the bouquet, what you're really judging is where in the life cycle of this wine are you? You know, instead of just saying, oh, this this acts really childish or something. Mm -hmm. it's, like, right. hey, it's either youthful, developing, or developed. All right. And aromas are usually able to detect youthful and developing. When you're saying developed, a lot of that has to do with the bouquet that the winemaker put in it from oak aging or whatever, and that's fully uh, you know, lost the tannins and and the aging oak has done its job and it's at the end of its drinkable life cycle. Mm -hmm. So intensity, low to high youthful, developing 2015, it's... Mm, it could be developing. Yep. Or developed. Now, what do you think it's going to taste like from the aroma? They don't have you do that, but I think it's a more fun thing to do. I have a feeling that it's not going to be high in acid. I think it's going to be um, more round. More balanced? Yes. You ready? Okay. I was wrong. I was totally wrong. It's acidic. 
Very acidic. Got to get on the sides of the tongue. Yes. Did you ever do the slurpy thing? No. The opposite of, of blowing out. Oh, oh, oh. With wines. Okay. I've done it with uh, a Chow lately. All right. I've seen that on films, but now I've seen it live. But you do it on the sides of the tongue. That's the only way you can get it to. And then you feel it like, whoa. I think we got it. The other thing. That is tart. <laughs> when, you, when you really do the slurp. Not in a bad way. Mm -mm. I mean, it, it surprised me. <laughs> really, I was thinking Chardonnay, and I was sort of prepared for something. Uh, so we would say dry. Yes. So the acidity is high. Um, it's dry, which doesn't really tell you, because we think it's tart, which I think is more I specific. I think it's more specific when you say tart. Mm -hmm. Okay, the body, is uh, it light? It is light. Very light. Uh, what, what did you say? Nah, I is medium light. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not, you know, water light. Light to full. Yes. Medium. Another flavor. You're getting apple. Yeah, and citrus. And citrus. Yes. All right. Apple for sure. Green apple. Of course, this whole area of the fruit flavor and aroma, there aren't specific terms. You know, this is as close as you'll get. I mean, right. They're not gonna say a, something very, very specific. Right, like tangerine. Yeah, it's good. Hey. Uh, You've got to go explore everything that your senses are telling you. Hmm. Astringency. Uh, we don't have tannins, so that's pretty much dealing with tannins. Okay. The opposite of acid, which creates wetness in your mouth, is tannin, which creates blindness okay. in your mouth. We're like not doing percent. reds, so we don't have to worry about it. Then finish. Is it short, oh. moderate, or long? This is a moderate finish to me. It's not short. Mm -hmm. But when I just tried this the other day, because I, I drank that over dinner several nights. Yes. So I don't drink much of when I'm doing a big Chardonnay. And I tried it the other night and I really spent some more time concentrating on the bouquet and in the mouth. And, this is a good wine. Mm -hmm. it, it, actually, the last sip I took, the finish was, was, was much longer when I, when I concentrated on it. And I was getting more of a bouquet the other night when I was going back to decide whether to Oh, I had two Chablis open, mm -hmm. and I said, which one? And then this one just became It clear. has a lot of character, mm -hmm. the, and it's, it's, um, it's a little sassy, is what I would say. It's really zingy. I said mm -hmm. some of them are zingy, but it's really neat to taste in Chablis, the city of Chablis. It's really easy. Oh. Cute little shops you step down into, and they'll have, you know, like glass floors with the barrel room below that. I mean, you know, it's just just a really a cute little town. I'm quite fond of. I have to that. take care of my little friend here. <laughs> if you want to keep him quiet. Okay. And the last thing they're talking about, you know, I, I often ask, gee, did you think the bouquet and in the mouth were balanced? Did one did the bouquet promise you something the mouth didn't deliver? Uh, so I put that in because I like to get that answer. What do All you right. think? Yeah. Um, there was a lot more to the wine from the bouquet. I wouldn't have guessed it was has as much character as, okay. it, as it does. So mouth is bigger than the nose. Mm -hmm. That's not good or bad. It's just a fact. And then overall, they added this when I was mm -hmm. reading quality. Because that's you know that often has to do with price. That has to do with who the winemaker is. Mm -hmm. But region in this area, it's what region, what slope, what. You know, but mm -hmm. but the bottom line is, I mean, from your experience, I'll experience tasting Chablis, but we haven't been tasting tons of Chablis. Is it poor, average, good, very good, excellent? Mm. It's hard to do that when you haven't had a million yeah, my Chablis. limited experience. I'll defer to you on that. Um. 
I'm, and I'd say my preference is this minerality, but, but it isn't your preference that matters. It's, is it a good Chablis? I think it's a very good Chablis. Uh, I think it's very good. Yes. Because when I went back and checked the bouquet against the other winemakers, Chablis, who shall remain nameless, but it was much younger. It just didn't have the character. Mm -hmm. And this one was starting to open up at the time. Whoa, I misjudge that. Mm. I concur. Very good. Balance. But, they're good, but I, I consider that of these three, the thinner one, that's why I had it first. Mm -hmm. Uh, I debated about the whole order. I just thought it's it's different. It's way up there. It's cold. You know, you're just gonna deal with it separately. I'm kind of surprised it's still considered part of Burgundy when mm -hmm. you get into these other ones. Right. But it's all, when when we used to have um, blind tastings, we bring a bottle and wrap it in foil. People go, oh, we know what Maryland's is. Hers is a Chablis. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And they were usually right. <laughs> My friends in Charlotte, I would bring it. Okay, the next one is this Macon. And this area is usually the less expensive. The Puy Fouché, the Macon Luni is one of my favorites. Uh, and uh, I'll try to show the bottle, but Louis Latour. We're now on Louis Latour. And you get the gold capsule oh. and uh, Latour and script. And that's the one I have not been to personally in uh, Burgundy and I have got to do that I look forward to that but it's located in Bone, Cook Door. Okay, Marilyn how do you pronounce? Ville Classe. Well I said Ville Classe. So I keep trying to figure out what those apostrophes are for uh -huh. and I don't know uh, but Ville Classe. What does it mean? I do not know. From the Bone region. It's the region. Bone. Oh, no. Any t-shirt says bone in the USA. Bone. Okay. Yeah. So we are back on our just professional approach to all this. Ollie uh, goes to heck the profession. Give me some goat cheese. Uh, hmm. Now this one, what is it color wise? Is it yeah, darker? It is darker. Is it darker than number three? Um, it is. I think so. Okay. I think so too. Um, it's the, the youngest. So it's surprising that it's the darkest. Um, it's a little bit more alcohol, just a, a tad. Uh, and it's clearly uh, transparent. Yes. But we're going to say the color is more golden. It's golden. Than the core. Okay. And you think about the bouquet. I swirl too much. Hmm. Hmm. Wait a minute. I'm picking up a little honey. I, I thought flowers. You got flowers. So you're supposed to get flowers. Oh. Oh, you got a Mont Rocher glass. I forgot to explain what the heck was going on here. I've only got two Chardonnay glasses. So we had that one. And I happen to have three Mont Rocher glasses. Mm -hmm. So you're getting Mont Rocher glass. So I can't really stick my nose in this one. Well, that is delicate. It is pretty. It is. It's a beautiful it's French maker. Golden Christmas color. Yeah. So we're still getting thin on the edge, golden, and the bouquet. I mean, the aroma. How intense is it? Low, medium, high. It's still, to me, a bit subtle. I think it's low. I agree with you. Okay. And the aroma. Youthful or developing mm. aroma. I, I would not say youthful, even though it is a youthful. But you said, hey, it's 10 years old. I mean, it's gone malactic. I heard about that earlier. Like a little honey for a second there. Mm -hmm. mm, that's it. I like it. 
Um, I'm, I'm predicting it's not going to be as tart or as spicy as the last. So we're thinking it's developing still? Yes. Not developed. Yes, developing. Okay. And then you think it's going to be uh, in the mouth. Is it going to be a bigger body? I predict just based on the, the color I'm, I'm, and the way it swirls, I'm thinking it's legs. Yes, I just, it just seems heavier in the class to me than the Shibley. Which I just look heavier, probably a little bit bigger body, and you don't think it's going to be as tart. Right. Okay, go for it. Right. Cheers, Heidi. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's a much heavier body. There's something almost lemony on the sides of the tongue. Yes. Uh, Acidity. It's not as it's not as acid as the Shibley. Right. So it'd be medium. Yes. And it's dry. Is it, it is tart? Dry. Yeah. No, it's, it's just dry. Just dry. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the body is a little bigger than mm -hmm. it is weightier, yes. The one thing that was getting to me is it dropped off fast. It did. There's there's an interesting side taste to it that I can't identify. I wanted to say asparagus. Isn't that funny? Asparagus. It's on the sides of your tongue. It's sort of a, a lemon peel. I don't know. I'm getting, I'm getting like cream lemon. Mm -hmm. Tart cream lemon. Because there's a little, there's a body in there. that's giving me the creamy. There is a creamy body. Yep. Creamy connotation. Yep. Hmm. Very disappointed. Well, wait a minute. Hmm. I don't know, I feel like it drops off. And from this region, because I've, I've had Mecklen de la, I've had Louis Fusse, uh, and they are, I'd say, I'd say, I'd almost use the term rustic in this setting. Oh. Because the other ones around are not rustic. Right. <laughs> So, you know, hey, you're getting, I've, I've been closer to feeling like I'm getting wood. Yes. And, uh, and this is 10 years old. Ah, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking this could be developed. It's or too young? Too old. Too old. It's a 2010. Okay. Just going back up at that. And I'm not sure though. The, the last taste to me, it, it stuck around a while. But. but why is this one place that we know selling 2010 this last year? Because this was bought. It was like it's, it was one of those ones by the glass on a Saturday. Yes. Okay. Well, it was great. Um, right. Model that. And why was this selling 2010 in 2020? So that's what I'm wondering if this guy is. At the end of this life cycle. But wouldn't it have a maybe a if, if that were true, would it have a darker color or not? But it is the darkest. Okay. That's of the true. three A and B, the finish is falling off. And when oh, I, I had a really, really when, when we when we were up a level, freaking pulling my marches, and I called my neighbors in Virginia and said, Oh my goodness, you gotta get down there. It's starting to be like light lemon okay. instead of this boom. Ah but it was, but it was the next level. And they said, boom, they started running and they said, uh, I try, uh, I said, it's great with uh, 
chicken piccata or oh, sure. anything piccata. Yeah. So they ran and started cooking like crazy. And I said, well, right. we had bought a lot, but we were, we just were ignoring them. And I'm not used to aging wine. I don't keep track every year. Right. And I said, oh my goodness, we're hitting the window. And there was somewhere in the 90s that we had mm -hmm. bought them. But that's would, what I'm wondering about this guy. It would still be great with fish, don't you think? Mm -hmm. And like you said, piccata. A great idea. Always. Like there's a lemon characteristic mm -hmm. that goes through these guys. So, um, what about the finish? Well, it doesn't drop off completely. No. It's, um, but it, but it is odd. It, it drops, drops off suddenly. Um, so I would say moderate. Uh, short to moderate. All right. And did the nose promise something that the mouth didn't deliver? Did the mouth, was the mouth more interesting than the nose? No, I, I, I thought the, the mouth was more interesting than the nose. Yeah. Okay. It, it was, it was a lot bigger than, you didn't get that much aroma from it really compared to, it was a surprise, a happy surprise. And quality. That's again, I would, hmm. uh, I would, uh, well, I would hear, I didn't type that in, but I meant to over here, I meant to say, uh, very good. Over here, I would go, well, then again, you're dealing with something that's a lot less expensive. But so it's good. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't register, mm -hmm. but it's good. Okay. Now we're going to the queen of the roller derby. And it's, it, and I'm not sure I'm, I'm screwing up, but it's Cassagna Morache. Now I know how to pronounce Puligny and not Merceau is another one to try sometime. Merceau is, a, it's a trio of those three mm. from <clears throat> this region that are just the biggest. And I have generally bought one bottle at about Christmas time and I'd sip it like all year long. Mm -hmm. Leave it up in the refrigerator. And like a summer marsh, I get down to Amelia Island or hopefully get it before I go down there mm -hmm. <clears throat> and say, okay, this is my yearly bottle. Well, this was in the cellar. I said, okay, it's near Christmas. Let's, mm -hmm. let's open this puppy. So uh, again, it's going to be transparent and the core versus the rim. And I've got a Montrachet glass for this one. So it's not as dark as the last? It's what? Not as dark a color as the last. Okay. And it's um, younger than the last. Yeah. So that makes... Oh, I have bubbles. Could that be? It could be. I don't know why, but it could be. That's interesting. Bubbles and legs. That is... Uh, it is. Okay. And what do you think of the aroma? Oh, this has got quite a nose. Yes. Oh, so sweet. Like, <laughs> very honey to me. Intense honey, mm -hmm. almost orange blossom honey. <clears throat> and it's a 2013, mm. so we'd probably say it's could be developing. Wow, that nose is just a <laughs> perfume. <laughs> oh. Smell that, Heidi? Nani. Truly, you could smell this all, all day long. Not In a mine. large graph. Not mine one bit. Glass. Hmm. So we're looking at the what do you think it's gonna be like in the mouth? I think there might be a sweetness to it, no? Mm -hmm. Based on this nose. What do you think the body is gonna be bigger than the last one? I do because I'm cheating and looking at my legs. You can cheat. 
because that's a good way to know. Um, just say, hey, look how it moves in the glass. Yeah, it just, it just seems there's more gravity happening. Oh, yeah. Mm, mm. I'd like to see that. Okay. Yeah, it's beautiful. So I think it's, it's going to be color. bigger in the mouth. Yes. Uh, maybe a longer finish. Hopefully. And we don't know what the fruit's going to be. Or the tartness. What do you think the fruit's going to be? Something honey. Um, yeah, well, I'm guessing apple. Honey lemon, honey granny smith, melon, maybe. All right, let's go for it. Hmm. Yeah, it's complex. No, not as powerful as I thought it would be. No, but there's a lot, there's a lot of flavors. It's funny, I almost- Bam! Because that's what I'm used to. Right. These polinis and these mon rochers. This right. one, I think it's kind of woozy. I, I think it's just slow to present. It's a 13. Hmm. And they said it's just a great year or something. This for is it. a funny thing, but I taste cloves. I got cloves. Or maybe do you do you taste anything like that? No, it was, it was I, at first I wanted to say cinnamon and then I thought no. I'm just initially disappointed because I'm so used to these being so big and so powerful, like just blow your head off. Right. And this one doesn't hit me that way. And it was just opened an hour ago. No, a couple hours ago. Well, never having enjoyed one before, I'm I think it's amazing. Hmm. Well, it's bigger, but normally they're so big, it's really hard to have a meal with them. Um, because they just they, power. they dominate. Oh, they and you just need boom. to have some crackers and yeah, they just boom. eat them with cardboard. So you, you, know, yeah. you sip, sip it around the holidays and go, well, I'll keep that for another night. Yes. And Because uh, some of these others, I think, yeah, I could have a meal with that. Yeah, I could have a meal with that. And this one's been like a, it's just overpowers normally. Hmm. But I'm not saying that about, and this, I usually get Latours. And I've been getting his Cassandra. So I don't, I can't say anything about the year being the difference. Sure. It's not a five. But it's the one <clears throat> that I'll get before I get on to Millie Island. Hmm. Still, the aroma. mouthfeel. I thought it would be heavier though. Oh yeah. I'm surprised. You know? It should be. It should, it should. Just weightier. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But still so entirely different from the other two. Mm. Given that it's the same grape. What do you say about acidity? Mm, there's not, it, it's not that it's acid to me. Uh, no. Yes. And it's mm -hmm. dry. Very dry. Yes. And the uh, body is uh, what medium. Oops. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. That's good. Spell stuff. I fear I've messed up your PowerPoint with my asparagus and cloves interjections. <laughs> but oh, don't worry about it. I just, I just tried to put it in below and then I'm trying to come down from the top, but I can fix that. There's just something go. just. Let's go. Boom, boom. Not a problem. It just won't line up. That's you know, maybe, it. maybe that's the minerality that I'm tasting. What do you think? Ooh. I'm just stunned, personally, and I can't figure it out. It can be 13, that's, hmm. maybe it's older. I don't know, but they're still, they're hmm. also hitting. 
Well, that's not even really going to happen after 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 13, that's seven years. Because yes. I can't swear what the other years were that I got uh, every Christmas. But that stuns me. I'm stunned, Oliver. I'm stunned. Um, don't be stunned. Hmm. I'm stunned. Oh, wait. Well, so for uh, overall, the balance and quality. Well, finish. Oh, we're on the finish. What do you want finish? Um, you know, it's similar to um, the Latour number two. To me, the finish, it's not short, but it's not long. It's like, uh, let's say it's moderate. Yeah. But this shouldn't be. This should be really long. Mm -hmm. Knock your socks off long. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the balance. Um, it's still, it's still, it's a little edgy for me. A little edgy? So that would mean a, a, a little astringent? Between the nose and the mouth? Yes. Uh, so the nose promise something the mouth didn't deliver or the nose was bigger than the, the nose was bigger than the mouth okay it's not that it was wussy in the mouth the mouth it's it just not nope, I don't like what i expected mm. Went up to expectations is what I put for the quality. Because Latour, um, I'd probably pay high 40s and it says sure. now it's worth like 70 or something. Right. Well, based on the price and the reputation, yeah. 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 Who would expect it? So I'm going to save this puppy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Save it as. I can't get it when I'm saving because there's pictures in the way. Here we go. Save it. Yes, okay. So then we'll go back here and we'll go stop sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody. A couple surprises there. Yes. Uh, I think we need to uh, see what happened to that king of the roller derby, the queen of the roller derby, the <laughs> queen of the roller derby, the uh, Cassandra Marache. I'm telling you, not terrific. Anyway, I um, hope you enjoyed it and you had some fun with your wines and maybe. It was our bottle or the year, maybe 13, just was not uh, what it was cracked up to be. But anyway, anything else that you want to say about it? I, they were all terrific. I mean, you know, you, I would, I would send none of them back for sure. I she wouldn't send none of them back. No. I would have sent back the last one. <laughs> oh, okay. I would. <laughs> but she wouldn't. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. And oh, that's great. Keep warm and keep safe, everybody. All right. Cheers. Bye.